This is how you can make an error flagging system for Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super or god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also offer a bot tier subscription, which is a full zip file of the exact bot used in these videos. We also have four different bot packages. They are all based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get into the Code. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start off by going over into our events and we're going to go over to our interaction create. So the reason we're doing it in the interaction create and not a separate interaction file is because we can only execute the command once and the command execution is going to take place within the interaction create file. So we're going to go ahead and go all the way down. And for me, in the slash command package, the interaction create file uh, already has all of the code to handle it. So uh, if you already have a bot file that handles all of your code and you have a functioning bot, find the area where you use command.execute and you execute the interaction and you execute the client. From there, you're going to go ahead and write a try catch and you're going to go ahead and catch an error. The slash command package already has this all built in. It consoles logs the error and it also replies to the original interaction with a short little error message. So within this try catch, this is where we're going to be doing our flagging. So we're going to come outside of this. We can just go ahead and give it a comment. So we can do error flag system just so that when we look through it later, we know what we're looking at. We're going to start off by getting our variables. So we're going to do var guild equals interaction dot guild. We can go ahead and do var member equals interaction dot member. We can do var channel equals interaction dot channel. And we're going to go ahead and do var error time equals. And I'm going to go ahead and get a timestamp. So this is going to be an arrow, a T, and then we're going to do math up floor. And then we can do date now divided by 1000 and we're going to do a colon and r and then an arrow so that's the discord timestamp just make sure you format that correctly then we're going to do const send channel equals await client dot channels dot fetch and we're going to go in and fetch the channel that you want this to be sent to so we're going to get that channel id this should be a private channel in a developers only server where only developers can see this because it's going to be giving some user information out and it's also going to be giving errors so this is like where all developers can access it to fix it then we're going to go in and write out our embed. So we can do const embed equals new embed builder. We're going to go in and start off by setting a color. And I'm going to go in and make this blurple. Then we can go in and say a description. And I'm just going to go ahead and say an error has been flagged while using a slash command. And we can say all other forms of interaction will not be logged with this system. So essentially, this system is only going to catch slash commands because this is a try catch for the command.execute. So that's essentially what we're doing there. Then we're going to go ahead and add some fields. So we're going to get a name. This is going to be error command. And we're going to set our value. And we can go ahead and open up a string. We're going to do backslash tick. We can do interaction.command name. We can do backslash ticks again. So now we're actually going to go ahead and copy this field. And we can go ahead and paste it again. So next, after our error command, we're going to get our error stack. And then instead of interaction.command name, we're going to go ahead and get our error.stack. Then we can do error message. And within this, it's going to be our error.message. So then after we do that, we only have one more. So we can go ahead and copy and paste this again. And this is going to be our error timestamp. And then within this, we're going to go ahead and remove the error. And we can just go ahead and say our error time, which is the variable we created above. So that was pretty straightforward. We basically got our error command, the command that the error occurred in. We have our error stack, which has pretty much the full error. We have our error message, which is the message of the error. And then we have the timestamp at which the error occurred. So now let's just go ahead and set our footer and we can say text and we can just go ahead and say error flag system just like that. Uh, and then we can go ahead and set a timestamp just to finish that off. So now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and write out our button because you're going to notice we have some user information above. We're going to go ahead and use this user information in a separate embed. So to do that, let's go ahead and write out our button. So we're going to do const and we can go ahead and do button equals new and we can do our button builder. So we're going to make a button builder. We can set a custom ID and this is going to be fetch error user info. We're going to go ahead and set a label and I'm just going to go ahead and get a a male emoji 
and we can go ahead and say fetch user info and we're going to go ahead and set a style so this is going to be our button style and then we can do dot danger so we're going to get all of that information now we're going to go ahead and make our action row so we're going to do const row equals new action row builder we're going to go ahead and add our components and we're going to just go ahead and pass in our button variable so now that we have our action row and our button let's go ahead and send our message and attach the button to that so we're going to do const msg equals await send channel and we can do dot send we're going to get our embeds and this is going to be the embed we created and we can get our components which is going to be our row component so now after we do that we're actually just going to go ahead and catch an error just in case for some reason the message sending fails so now that we've catched our error we should be good to go so essentially what we have so far is we have all of our information with the error and we went ahead and logged it to a channel. Now let's go ahead and handle the button so that when we click on it, we get our user information. So the user information is going to be the information of the user that caused the error. So to do that, we can come outside of this and we're going to do var time equals, just like the recent videos I've been doing, it's going to be 300 milliseconds, which is five minutes. This is going to be the collector time. And then after that, the collector is going to expire and the button is going to be set to disabled. We're going to do const collector equals await msg.create message component collector. So we're going to go ahead and create our collector. Then we can go ahead and actually open this up. So we're going to go ahead and open it up with curly braces. And within this, we're going to get our component type. And this is going to be our component type dot button. And we're also going to pass in our time just like that. All right. So now after we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and turn our collector on. So we can do collector dot on and we're going to go ahead and collect. We can pass in our async I and we're going to open this up here with an arrow function. Within this, we're going to check our custom ID. So we're going to do if we can do I dot custom ID is equal to and we can go ahead and get our fetch error user info custom id this is the same custom id we used in our button then we're going to open this up so we're going to do const user embed equals new embed builder we're going to go ahead and set a color we can go to make this blurple we can go ahead and set a description and we can go ahead and say this user has triggered a slash command error while using one of the commands listed above so we have our description now let's go ahead and add our fields it's going to be our name, which is going to be error guild, and we can pass in our value, and this is going to be a string, backslash tick, and we can do our guild.name, and then we can do parentheses, we can do guild.id, and we're going to finish the backslash ticks off. So just like above, we're going to go in and copy this field. We're going to go ahead and paste it down below. This is going to be our error user. And instead of guild.name, we're going to go ahead and do member.user.username. And then within this, we can go ahead and get our member.id. And then one last thing, we're going to go ahead and get our error command channel. So this is going to be the channel that the command was used in. So this is going to be our channel.name, and then it's going to be our channel.id. Then we're just going to go ahead and set a timestamp, and now we're going to go ahead and send it. So we can do await i.reply, and we can go ahead and get our embeds, which is going to be our user embed. And we're also going to go ahead and set informal to true on that reply to the button. So after we're done with that collector, let's go ahead and turn the collector off. So we're going to do collector dot on again. We can do end. We can do async and we can just do a function and we can open it up like that. So this collector on end event is going to take place after five minutes of the message being sent. So after that occurs, we just want to go ahead and set our button to set disabled and we're going to make that true. So we're going to set our button to disabled Then we're going to set our embed. So we're going to set our footer. Keep in mind, this is going to be the original embed, not the user embed. So it's going to be the first embed that we actually sent. And we're going to go ahead and get our text. And this is going to be the same as above. So we can do error flag system. And we can do dash and we can say your user fetch button has expired just like that. So after we do that, we can do a way to msg.edit. We can get our embeds. We're going to get our embed and we can get our components, which is going to be our row component. So after we do that, we're actually done with this entire system. So what we've done here is within our existing error handling, we've made a bunch of variables and we've sent those variables within a developer only channel so that if the developer is not on the host console they can still see all of the errors that are occurring and then we've also gone ahead and set up a button system so those developers can also see the guild user and channel uh, in which the error took place so with that let's go ahead and save this file restart the bot and test this out all right so over in the discord let's go ahead and test this out i've gone ahead and created a command that has a bunch of errors i'll show you it now now as you can see this command has um, content that's misspelled we have interaction.player.id obviously that's not 
existing. And then we also misspelled infernal. So you could go ahead and create a command like this if you'd like to, or you could just let it happen with um, your existing commands. But for me, I created this so I could test this system. So now over in the Discord, we can actually go ahead and run this. So we're going to run our error test and we can go ahead and send it. So as you can see, it's going to say there was an error while executing this command. Now, this is the original error message that we provided. Uh, this has been in the slash command package as long as it's existed and it works. It works for the user's end. But for the developer, the only way we can actually access this is by viewing it in the console. And sometimes developers don't have access to the console 24 seven. But if we notice vids has a message, if we go over to it, first we have our command used. So we, this is a previous system that lists all of the commands that were used. So that's helpful. And now we have another message that says an error has been flagged while using a slash command. All other forms of interaction will not be logged with the system. Now, I guess I did forget to set a title so we can go ahead and fix that for the next test. But as you can see, we have our error command, we have our error test, we have our error stack, which gives me the full error as well as where it occurred. We have our error name and we have our error timestamp. So as you can see, this system is working. I've gone ahead and added the title back and I just said a uh, flagged error or something like that. So let's go ahead and run this command again so we can test it out. So we can go back over to the channel. Let's run our error test. We can go ahead and send it. We can go back over here. As you can see, now we have a title. It says flagged error. Everything else is the same because it's obviously the same command, obviously the same error but now our timestamp is updated. Let's go in and test out our button. If we go in and click on fetch user info, as you can see here, now we have a button that says this user has triggered a slash command error while using one of the commands listed above. And then it gives our error guild, which is the server we occurred this error in. We have our user, which is me, cause I'm the one who ran the command. And we have our error channel, which is the vid showcase channel, which is the channel that the error occurred in as well. So that is the entire system. Now, I'm not going to wait for it like I do in the other videos where we wait for the button to expire because I'm confident that that is going to work. But what's going to happen is after five minutes, this button is going to gray out and the embed is going to be edited similar to what's happening up here. And the reason for that is because collectors cannot last forever. And by editing out after five minutes, we go ahead and prevent any other errors that may occur. So that's you can make an advanced error flag system for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out and you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community and with that i'll see you guys in the next video